Hi, I'm Rich Miller. At Virtua, we believe citizens need to be informed about the important healthcare issues affecting their lives. That's why we're proud to support healthcare programming produced by the Caucus Educational Corporation and their partners in public television. New Jersey State Governor's Jefferson Awards next on Caucus New Jersey. Funding for this edition of Caucus New Jersey has been provided by the Russell Berry Foundation, Fedway Associates, Inc., Cone Resnick, providing accounting, tax, and advisory services for more than 90 years, Verizon Communications, Barnabas Health, and by New Jersey Natural Gas, proud to support education in our communities. Promotional support provided by NJ Biz, All Business, All New Jersey, The Star Ledger, and NJ.com, Everything Jersey. And by New Jersey Monthly, the magazine of the Garden State, available at newsstands. Welcome to Caucus New Jersey. I'm Steve Adubato. The New Jersey State Governor's Jefferson Awards recognize exceptional volunteers throughout the state. Here to share the conversation about these very extraordinary acts of service, we have a very exceptional panel. We have Ed O'Malley, who is the chair of the Governor's Advisory Council on Volunteerism. Bob Provost, who got us into this whole thing in the first place, Vice President of Marketing, the Star Ledger and Board Chair, New Jersey State Governor's Jefferson Awards. Hans Decker, President, the Community Foundation of New Jersey, and finally, Joe Wall, Senior Vice President, PNC, New Jersey Market. Thank you for all, all for joining us. By the way, you did get us into this, Bob. You had a conversation with us a few years back where you start telling us about the Jefferson Awards. Tell folks who don't know what it is, we're about to see a tape piece that's terrific and brings it to life in just a few minutes. But bring it to life in this conversation, and how did you get into it in the first place? Well, the Jefferson Awards are the official uh, United States Senate and White House recognition for volunteer and public service. And they're conducted at a national level, but in each local market, they work with media partners to identify outstanding citizens who are then uh, forwarded to the national award ceremony for participation and recognition. And when I got to New Jersey in 2005, from Albany? From Albany, New York, where I spent 30 years with Hearst, uh, all of the Hearst markets participated, but for whatever reason, there was no activation in the state of New Jersey. And I made contact with our good friend Hans at the Community Foundation for New Jersey. And as you know, the Community Foundation strives to improve the standard and quality of life in New Jersey just as we do. And we agreed to give this a jump start. And so for about two years, uh, the Community Foundation and the Star Ledger administrated the program uh, unilaterally until we felt we had the momentum to bring in other partners and grow it. And why'd you jump into this, Hans? You know, what hooked me is uh, Bob was sharing stories of the people they had celebrated in other communities. And there was a guy in Pittsburgh who took it upon himself to write back to every kid who wrote to Santa. There was something like <clears throat> 30,000 letters over his lifetime to responding as Santa. And I said, we've got those stories in New Jersey. We've got to make sure we shine a spotlight on those. And that's what got you. Yeah. And, you know, we've been partners for a long time. The, you know, PNC has been a great um, sponsor and uh, underwriters, we call them in public television. What hooked you? Well, you know, PNC as a business, we go to market with the, the theme that we stand for the achiever in you. And, mm -hmm. of course, that's about what we do for, in helping people to achieve their financial goals. But there's, I think, a greater understanding that unless our communities succeed, we're not going to succeed as a business. So we do things to support our communities and to uphold those people who are making our communities more vital, good places to live. And so the Jefferson Awards was just a natural uh, fit for us as a business. We're going to talk about the state's involvement and Ed's uh, involvement with the Governor's Advisory Council on volunteerism in just a second. But Ed, you were there that night. And we met some really terrific, extraordinary people making a, a huge difference. But you're about to see uh, before Ed jumps into the conversation, you're about to see a video clip of some of those uh, really very special people. It was a great night. It really, you know, you think you know who you're going to meet, and we were proud to be a part of it and host the night. But when we got to interview the people there, um, listen, you can talk about it, it's one thing, but seeing it's quite another. Let's take a look at the video. 
We're here at the Goldsteins, and they were recognized for the work um, with the Jefferson Award. Tell folks who may not know who the Goldsteins are, why you're recognized tonight. The Goldsteins are co-founders of the Valerie Fund, an organization that supports comprehensive health care for children with cancer and blood disorders throughout New Jersey. We have seven centers in uh, hospitals, uh, medical centers and hospitals that treat uh, the child who is sick uh, and uh, their family. We're, we're very involved with the families too. We have not only uh, pediatric oncologists, we have social workers, we have child care specialists, we have educators, we have, what else do we have there? By the way, Ed, why do you do it, why do you do it, Ed? It's a need that we have. We had lost our daughter in 1976, and at that time, there was no pediatric oncologist in New Jersey. And we had to travel 70 miles to New York every day, and sometimes stay overnight. And the ride home at that time, was horrible because there was no anti-nausea pills to be taken. So our daughter Valerie, every 10 minutes we'd have to stop going over the bridge, going on Route 80, going on the Garden State Parkway. And we found an awful lot of people there who just couldn't afford to come back and forth. They lived in New Jersey. And they were blue collar workers who loved their children just as much as we did. But unfortunately, they didn't have the wherewithal to make a daily trip. And on weekends, the mother would come on a Saturday, the father would come on a Sunday, and you had so many reasons to be heartbroken. And we have such a great state with so many good people in it, and there's no reason why New Jersey shouldn't have been in the forefront. Friends of friends and friends of friends of friends uh, heard about uh, our daughter and that we were uh, interested in starting something that would benefit the sick children here in New Jersey. Uh, they just said, I'll help, I'll do what I can, and, and they did. We treat yeah. 4,000 children a year now with about 30,000 office visits. And we also have ambulatory service that we take them yeah. back and forth yeah. from the inner city, people who can't afford to go. We pick them up and bring them to our centers. Uh, there is no reason why a child shouldn't be treated properly with or without money. We're here with Ed Afanador, and uh, Ed, tell the folks uh, not only why you were recognized by the Jefferson Awards, but also who you're with. Um, actually, uh, why I was recognized was uh, for volunteer leadership, and uh, yeah, I, was, I was nominated by Donna Clementoni uh, for uh, my work with Wounded Warriors. Um, I'm a disabled veteran myself uh, from 9-11. Uh, um, I, on the recovery uh, end of 9-11. Uh, and I'm here with Arnie. Arnie my, is my service dog, and uh, I have lung injuries, and uh, I, have a, I have a hard time ambulating. So uh, that's his job. He actually helps me uh, ambulate around. And uh, what a wonderful, uh, wonderful evening and a wonderful time to be here. And what would you like to say to folks who um, don't get a chance to really understand um, some of the challenges that uh, our veterans face, particularly those who are wounded, but those who come back and give so much like you? Well, you know, y you experience changes, you know, uh, especially uh, at the World Trade Center, and uh, I was at Staten Island also. Uh, you see things that change you. Um, you see some horrifying things, but you need to um, try to move on, and sometimes you just don't have that chance. And when you, when you come back home, you have to re-assimilate uh, and uh, sometimes uh, we have a hard time doing that. So uh, I was lucky enough to get into treatment and uh, I made it my life's passion to, to work with our wounded warriors and, and try to get them back to the other side. Kathleen, we've talked so many times in the studio, uh, but now I get a chance to talk to you tonight. You get recognized for your work with the food bank. Um, why is it more important than ever before the work that you do? By the way, for those who don't know, about the Community Food Bank. Tell folks what it is, why it's so important. And by the way, congratulations on the Jefferson Award. Hey, th thank you, Steve. It, you know, I've been doing this almost 40 years, and there's more people hungry now than ever before. So certainly we need everybody to get involved. And I'm honored, humbled to receive this tonight. But one of the things I thought about, I didn't get this because I'm special. Uh, it's, it's because I cared. And I don't want people to think they can't make a difference unless they're special. I'm not special. I just care a lot. And if people care that there's hungry people out there, they can make a difference. You know, what Kathleen's not telling you is that um, she didn't start. I mean, she runs the, she's the head of 
and is recognized by many for work at the Community Food Bank in New Jersey. But you started out of a? Station wagon. <laughs> so it doesn't start with the whole big thing. Real quick, the short version, you started out of the station wagon, what year? Uh, 1975. How and why? Well, <laughs> exactly. Good one. I like that. How and why? <laughs> because I thought that I was concerned about world hunger and where my feet were planted was part of the world. I thought, let me see if there are people in my neighborhood who might be hungry. Kathleen DeCharis is just one of the extraordinary people we met there, right, Ed? Absolutely, Steve. Um, as you saw in the video, um, there were extraordinary folks that we had the opportunity to recognize that evening. The Goldsteins, for example, uh, with the Valerie Fund, actually won the National Jefferson Award, the Jacqueline Ken Kennedy Onassis Award, mm -hmm. uh, which recognized it from the entire country their efforts uh, with children's oncology efforts. And uh, that's one of the reasons why um, the, the Governor's Awards got involved with the Jefferson's, Jefferson's Awards a couple of years ago and molded our, our efforts together and made it broader and even more special. Ed, do me a favor. Before, we're, and Bob's going to explain why, why the word <coughs> Jefferson, Thomas Jefferson, make that connection. Mm -hmm. The Governor's Advisory Council on Volunteerism, why you're involved and how does it change the equation of this operation, this initiative? Certainly. Uh, I've been involved now for about 10 years with the Governor's Office of Volunteerism. Uh, we're responsible for helping um, throughout the state of New Jersey with the volunteer centers, with uh, improving and increasing volunteerism throughout the state of New Jersey. And uh, we're very proud that uh, uh, the most recent estimate is that there's almost $4 billion worth of value mm. in the volunteer efforts of our citizens. Good stuff. By the way, you're going to see the website up right now. As we do that, we're going to have a discussion about how exactly people are nominated for the Jefferson Awards, right? And how you basically, about your friend, your neighbor, a family member, someone you know is making a difference, why you would do it, how you do it. Bob. Sure. By the way, Jefferson, Thomas Jefferson. Yeah. Uh, Jefferson is credited with having stated that, you know, his vision of the, let's call it the Jeffersonian democracy, is a nation of informed and involved citizens. And, and within that charge, uh, in the roots of our country with our founding fathers, was the First Amendment media and the mission mm -hmm. to inform and to involve and provide the people with the information they need to recognize need. Uh, the situation now is, is we're recognizing those citizens who live up to that Jeffersonian ideal. They mm -hmm. see what's happening, they're motivated to do something about it, and they get involved. Too many uh, citizens see what's happening in the media, they read about tragedies, they read about need, and they wring their hands and they say, someone should do something. The people we're recognizing do something. And that's spirit. By the way, I'm holding up right here, Bob Morris, <coughs> our director. To zoom in on this, this is Joanne Harris, I believe. This yes. is Joanne Harris, one of the many people recognized Hans and Joe that night. And uh, Linda Bowden, your colleague over at PNC, is pictured here with Rich Veza from yes. the Star Ledger. Uh, real quick, the Star Ledger on a regular basis features, highlights these winners. Joanne Harris happened to be one of them. This happens to be today's Star Ledger. You do that on a regular basis. Yes. Every Tuesday, uh, we recognize one of the two dozen or so volunteers uh, in the second six, half, six months of the year. And that's our promotion campaign to urge others to nominate and to urge others How to do you step do that? Let's up. Let's talk about this. How do you do it? Uh, we do uh, a how combination. Do people, right now, how do you nominate? You go to the website predominantly for those people with internet access. They click on the nomination link and they put in their contact information, the contact information of the person they're nominating, and there's a window there for them to type a short nomination essay addressing the goals. Uh, it's that simple. We get hundreds, uh, sometimes thousands of nominations each year. Uh, kind of an irony this past year is we didn't get as many nominations as the year before. And in discussing it, we said there are too many people already engaged in volunteering with the Hurricane Sandy Let's situation. Sandy second. So well, let me do this. For Joe and Hans, <clears throat> I'm going to ask this question. For people watching right now who say they think they know of someone, what do you think they should be looking for, and what do you think they should be looking for? Joe, first. Well, <clears throat> uh, I think just to put a finer point on what Bob said, I think there's so many folks who just see an overwhelming issue, they throw up their hands and they say, it's a natural human thing, what can be done? These are people who say, what can I do? Right. And I think they're characterized by their 
not only their personal enthusiasm, but their, their, their can-doism, but they have a vision. They see a problem and they see a solution. They see their ways to doing something that can make it better. And I also think what's uh, common about them is that they don't see that this is about necessarily just themselves doing something. Right. They all see that it's about involving other people. They, they are people who become, you know, coaches, people who inspire, people who lead, but who are, the, you know, they, they are like coach players. You know, those kinds of folks are the people who are, I think, really embody the spirit of the Jefferson Awards. Jump in on. Yeah, I mean, I think what I've always been amazed by the Jefferson is the diversity of things that are people are working on. So some folks are in their community making their community a better place. Some people are taking on huge issues around Sandy recovery coming from other states. So I think folks have to think broadly about what volunteerism means because there are folks taking on big issues, small issues, and doing remarkable work around it. And so we want to celebrate that. By the way, there are 18 different categories that people are nominated in. And when you go on the website, I believe you'll see those different categories. You and know, they're all explained. They're all but, explained. But we create new ones. Our, Quite frankly, based on the organic evolution of you know what we see in the nomination. And is Sandy essays. a good example of that? Hans? Exactly, it was. Yeah, 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 we, hope not, <laughs> we hope never to again have a storm-related category like we did this past year. But um, uh, going forward, if there's a unique circumstance, we're going to add that to the category, Steve. Uh, but, uh, but that had to be done. It had to be done. We had some very unique responders that uh, uh, helped with this. Uh, an example of this past year was Steve Galetta, who you helped recognize. Yeah. Um, he's a lieutenant with the state police who, at the Office of Emergency Management, um, does extraordinary work, um, not just with his daytime job, but literally 24-7 uh, to keep the citizens safe. Um, his planning work has well, been extraordinary. Edward, this. Um, it's one of those things. We had great people in the studio. We got a great clip here. He is actually in the clip. Let's go to the clip. This is a group of people we recognized. Sandy volunteers made a big difference, recognized for the Jefferson Awards. A great night. Let's take a look, and we'll come back to the studio. Tonight we celebrate. It is a fabulous evening. You're going to hear miraculous stories of gifts. But the story I regularly hear, and I suspect we'll hear tonight, when you ask someone, how were you impacted by the storm, no matter how impacted they were, and I have talked to people who have lost their homes, no matter how hard they were hit, no matter how sad they were that they lost everything, they will never, never tell you. They'll always say, I'm fine. Go help them. We're here with Lieutenant Joe Galetta, who got a special award in connection with his work um, helping so many in connection with uh, Hurricane Sandy. Lieutenant, describe for folks just a little bit. I know you don't want to talk in detail because um, you're modest, but describe for folks some of the work you did and some of the help you gave to so many during Hurricane Sandy. Well, assigned to the State Police Office of Emergency Management, I was detailed to be the voluntary agency liaison for Hurricane Sandy response. And what we did was we coordinated activities with the Governor's Office of Volunteerism and New Jersey Voluntary Organizations Active in Disasters to try to give some help to the 260,000 people that cried out for assistance from Hurricane Sandy. And as part of the voluntary agency liaison, we tried to mobilize our volunteer community to help out with response and recovery operations throughout the state. What do people need, Lieutenant? Right now, we're getting into the rebuilding phase. What did they need at the time, I and mean, particularly after the 29th of October, during those early days, what do people need the most, and what were you giving the most? Well, clearly, directly after the uh, aftermath of Sandy, shelter they needed and power was a problem. But right now, we're trying to get people back in their homes. And we have a lot of voluntary agencies out here helping out with rebuilding. And we're trying to coordinate donations management across the state to give aid to those that still need stuff. And uh, we've established a website, uh, ndmn.us. That's for national donations. Say it again. NDMN.US, that's National Donations Management Network.US slash NJ, where people can go onto that site and see the needs across the state of New Jersey and donate out of the kindness of their heart for those that still need assistance. We're here with uh, Jody Burke, who was originally from East Brunswick, mm -hmm. but now lives in? Elliston, Virginia. And you are our only out of state honoree tonight and uh, recognized for your work in connection with? Um, Hurricane Sandy and just collecting supplies and donations and truckloads of everything and anything that 
I can get together uh, to get up to New Jersey. Oh, okay. um, Why did you do that? Because um, this is my home, and I just felt like um, being down there, I just felt like a hole. <laughs> and I just wanted to help my, my friends and family. And um, I don't know. I just I, I felt like I had to do something. I couldn't sit down there and not do anything. So it was like something in me just clicked, and I just started doing things and calling and got on Facebook and created volunteer pages and supply pages and it became bigger and bigger and bigger <laughs> and it just got huge and then my house became filled with supplies and then there became inventory lists and people started calling me from different states it became New Jersey and New York and Connecticut and it just became crazy. We are here with Jesse Rivera of the Salvation Army who won one of the Jefferson Awards tonight. Jesse, what does it mean to win the award tonight? Well, it's a great award and it's very much appreciated for the recognition, but I feel that uh, this award is given to the people of New Jersey who have volunteered their services and I'm just representing them. Uh, it's not about me, it's about all the people that have done great work here. Describe some of the work that uh, those folks, together with you, have been involved in. Well, um, to go back to Sandy, for example, I, one of the things that I saw on the beach was the citizenry. The people came out to help. A lot of the people that were from the surrounding communities came out. The National Guard that stood their ground and helped us to feed people. The Rutgers students that were in the shelters helping people. There was a lot of people involved, and it's really hard to accept an award, a personal uh, award, uh, when in fact uh, there's so many people that uh, should be uh, carrying this medal. Mm. These are called honorees. They're not called winners for a reason. If you have someone you want to honor, recognize, go to the website, do it. You know of someone. And by the way, there were some young people recognized, the Youth Initiative. Go. Yeah, uh, there's a special component to the Jefferson Awards in which they recognize uh, youth leadership, youth service. And in particular, there's this, I think, truly stunning group of young women at Benedictine Academy in uh, Elizabeth that for two years in a row now, they've been chosen as a national leadership high school by the mm -hmm. National Jefferson Award programs. They're a national ambassador school. And it's just uh, remarkable to see uh, a culture at work at a school that pervades the administration, the teachers, and these young women that they mm -hmm. feel called to service. They're addressing now uh, this issue of human trafficking. That's right. And it's uh, something that uh, it's a problem, it's a global problem mm -hmm. that ex exists in every country, but that takes, you know, the visible form here when you, real human lives here in the state of New Jersey. And here are high school girls taking on that as their personal challenge. It's amazing. Powerful stuff. Hans, real quick, you've often said that there is a spirit of giving in this state. You see it. Describe it. Yeah. Well, I mean, the Jefferson Ward, so, I mean, we're one of the most, because from a sheer amount of money, one of the most philanthropic states in the country. And then you have this, what did Ed say, $4 billion. Uh, in volunteer activity going on in our community. I mean, it's really not just New Jersey. It's an American spirit. And young that, people that as well. Unique. Young people, I mean, my kids, when they have a lemonade stand, are raising money for a cause. I was raising money for a bike. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. the, the culture has shifted around volunteer and service. Yeah. Two minutes left. The final things that you want to say here to folks who, look, we, well, why are we doing, why are your, we are your media partners, you're our media yeah. partners, we're doing this because we're trying to raise awareness and get more people recognized as honorees. What do we want to tell folks right now? Steve, uh, the, the needs continue to grow in our state. Um, we live in one of the best states to, to raise our children, uh, to work, to live. And uh, as we just demonstrated in this recent storm activity, yes. Um, people came together, we, we helped each other. Um, we need to continue to do those kinds of efforts. And one of the ways that we can do that is by shining a spotlight on the incredible works of young people and old uh, and everybody in between. And we can do that through honoring people with the Jefferson Awards. Bob Provost, you came from Albany. You started this initiative. You got a lot of us involved. We're, we're glad to be doing it. What do we need to do to continue this energy, this enthusiasm, because magic doesn't just happen. I mean, you know, it's funny. People say, oh, isn't that great? That's nice. And then five years later, it's gone. People wonder how that happens. How do we keep it going? Well, first off, the visibility of the program. And, and the goal of the awards is, yes, to honor people, but also, as I commented that night, to exploit all these honorees, to put their name and their face in the paper, tell people what they did, 
publish it on a website, nj.com, and, and have people say, why, why aren't I one of these people? Why haven't I stepped up? I could do more. And so, in essence, we're, we're really holding them up as role models and saying, what about you? The, the, other aspect, left. the other aspect of that is the youth program. It's not just recognizing youth. We're now in yeah. classrooms, in schools, fostering youth leadership for the next we'll generation. We'll talking off the air. Done a great public service, and I thank you all very much. The preceding program has been a production of the Caucus Educational Corporation, celebrating 25 years of broadcast excellence and 13 for WNET, NJTV, and WHYY. Funding for this edition of Caucus New Jersey has been provided by the Russell Berry Foundation, Fedway Associates, Inc., Cohn Resnick, Verizon Communications, Barnabas Health, and by New Jersey Natural Gas. Transportation provided by Airbrook Limousine, serving the metropolitan New York, New Jersey area. Caucus New Jersey has been produced in partnership with TriStar Studios. This program has been made possible in part by New Jersey State Nurses Association. Hi, I'm Bob Shearer. 6,000 New Jersey advanced practice nurses are working in primary care, hospitals, and specialties, caring for patients and families. I'm Kelly LaRocca. The National Governors Association and AARP support care by APNs because it improves patient outcomes. Without advanced practice nurses, many operating rooms would have to cancel surgeries and one out of five Medicare patients would not receive care. Quality care for all New Jerseyans is what we care about.